We're going to talk about those things today, everyone. It's going to be a, a fun and exciting time here on this program. I did watch SmackDown, believe it or not, and uh, all of these other shows as well. And yes, I did, in fact, make Vinny watch Urban Wrestling Federation. Make is a good word. <laughs> You know, I watched it again. I didn't watch the whole thing. I was busy writing the SmackDown report for The Observer while you watched about the first 40 minutes. But I do got to say, um, you know, I watched it a second time. And? I watched part of it a second time. And uh, I was entertained. It's a perverse form of entertainment. Hmm. I've seen some, I've seen some bad shows in my lifetime. A lot of them from uh, TNA. And uh, some of them I just sit there and I'm just like, oh my god, I, I, if, I, if I never watch this show again, how fast can I delete this TNA pay-per-view off of my DVR? Herb and Wrestling was over, I left it on the DVR, and I, I made you watch it. And I, I watched the second half with you again. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to get the next one. Is you that weird? are not. Is that weird that I am? Yes. <laughs> Come on, it's fourteen ninety five. It's There's- It's... Well, it is only an hour. There's something about it. That show at two hours would have been... Oh, yeah. I would have killed myself. I could not have handled three hours of that. But um, for an hour... <laughs> you know... It was not the worst show I ever saw. I, I think I... I uh, once once Steve Carroll actually came on the program and explained that it was it was supposed to be Grand Theft Auto with a little wrestling in there, then I understood it. You know? There was, no. a sh- there was a shooting at the end. <laughs> That's not the part that bothered me. I was fine with the gunplay. Oh, my God. I still, I will say this. You know, I mentioned this criticism on Sunday. After a second viewing, I still have absolutely no idea who anybody is. No. That, have, that's what bothered me most. Absolutely no idea who anybody was. There's a cast of 400 characters who, as far as I can tell, they all had the exact same motivation. They were all about defending their turf and getting that money. Yeah, they got to get their money and their weed. Yeah. <laughs> so you weren't a fan? Um, no. Definitely not. You are a middle-aged white man. I it, it is true. I am a white man rapidly approaching middle age. I guess you can call it say I'm middle age now. I think you've been middle aged for about 15 years. In my soul, on my soul I've been elderly. Sure. For, for for a half decade or more. Yeah. But uh, why don't you tell us about this show? Why don't you tell us about your thoughts? Start with urban wrestling, so I can throw in some of my thoughts as well. You guys can read my whole review in the new new figure four. I wrote a hell of a review, if I do say so myself. It was uh, (laughs) probably better than mine. I mean, my report was pretty accurate. Uh, Yeah, really, on the whole. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to decide because I, of course, read your review before watching the show. I'm trying to decide if that made the show better or worse, knowing <laughs> knowing the, 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 the soup I was getting into. God damn, I wish you were here on on uh, on Sunday. It's funny. I watched this with uh, Junior Horseman. <laughs> that is funny. And I was on the couch, and he was on the chair, and we sat there, and we watched it. And, uh, you know, like, we were repeatedly looking over at each other. You know? Yeah. Like when you go, did you? Like, did I just see what you just saw? Is and vice versa, really happening? But every time we looked at each other, we like we like smiled and laughed. So in the end, I mean, I'm gonna look back on this in a year, and it's gonna be a pleasant memory. The laughs I had with Junior Horseman watching the Urban Wrestling Federation. So I wish you would have been there, Vinny. What the hell was that? That's your fault. Something just fell down there. I was so excited, I knocked something over with psychic powers. So yeah, tell us about this show. Show opened with Gina Torres of AllHipHop.com telling us that Uncle Murder had been arrested. <laughs> I think it's Murda, but that's okay. No, not anymore. <laughs> it's, it's Uncle Murder? <laughs> no, because Uncle Murder is not silly at all. <laughs> Point being, I don't know who this is. I am just, I, know I am so you. madly entertained that you are reviewing this show. <laughs> And it started out with talk of Uncle Murder being arrested. <laughs> so, okay. so uh, we got graphics telling us this was Steve the Hustler's Urban Wrestling Federation. The Hustler. And all I, could, all I could think was, you know, perhaps there was someone on the fence. They didn't know if they were going to get the Urban Wrestling Federation show. And then they saw it was Steve the Hustler. Now, well, I put my money down for this one then. Mm-hmm. So, 
there were two black guys backstage talking to a white man who may have been Stevie J. Speaking of Steves. It's funny that that, uh, that you wrote in your report here, two black men were talking to a white man backstage. I believe that was the exact word-for-word word thing that I typed. <laughs> Is there anything else? There was nothing else to describe this man. It's like, as writers... I, 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 for about... Okay, go ahead. As a writer, there's no other way to explain what we just saw. No. I, I don't know who the men were. No. I mean, I mean, in trying to explain it to the reader, all I could say was there were two men who were black, yes. and they were talking to a man who was white. That's all I could say about this. In my report here... I, I, I described everyone's ethnicity for about three skits, and they said, you know what? Hell, it doesn't matter. Just a bunch of dudes. Mm-hmm. So uh, Steve the Hustler, who is the one who may be Stevie J, white man older than me, mustache, he was talking. I understood about 20% of what he said. They were mumbling a lot. Talked about Detroit, Miami, and Chicago and putting money in his pockets. So it was important murder was with them, and they went their separate ways. We had a graphic identifying the ring announcer as Larry Legend. That was good. A graphic. A graphic. They came and went. We had Low Life Louis Ramos versus someone who I just described as the opponent. <laughs> X. You know what I said? I, I put X thinking I would go back later and, and, and write uh, what the man's name was. I never got it. You know, it's good that, that uh, it's good you're reviewing this because... You know, sometimes I think, well, maybe maybe I, I, I uh, was so busy trying to explain what I was seeing that I, I missed the explanation of who this man was. But it appears to me that now we've got you, Junior Horseman, and myself, and none of us could identify who it was that low life no. Louis Ramos was wrestling. Not a clue. So that's good. But he came out. He had a steel chair. He uh, hit Louis Ramos in the head with it half a dozen times. It was bent like Mike Awesome and Masato Tanaka. And you'll recall that Mike Awesome was currently dead. Because he was hitting the head with a chair so many times. They, uh, he stabbed Louis with a fork for a while. And uh, then he cut a promo. As he was talking, the announcers never stopped talking. They all just mumbled over each other. The opponent said he represented the ATL. He brought <laughs> the out- opponent, <laughs> he yes. wrote. Capital T, capital O. <laughs> the- actually would be a hell of a name for a wrestler. <laughs> the opponent. Yeah. He represented the ATL. He brought out Ruckus, Grim Reefer, and Big Block. They had graphics for this. They said they came out to get that money. Out came Uncle Murda. It was Murda. You're right. Because they had a graphic for this too. EC, ne- EC, I almost said EC Negro. Well, it could have been. EC Negro up for Luchador. And uh, KC Blade. Blade and, and Negro were wearing uh, Yankees jerseys. And Negro was smart enough to put his name on the back of the jersey. That's good. Why, why is man here? Now, now, let me get this straight. Are you sure that Uncle Murda came out? No. Okay, because I, <laughs> I, I had this, when I watched the show, I thought they kept talking about Uncle Murda, but he never showed up. Mm-hmm. So maybe he was here, and I just don't know who he I, was. I don't know. All I know because for the the whole thing is built around turf wars, and each turf, whether it's Atlanta or Miami or New York or Brooklyn or, or I think it was Chicago, but they each have a different spokesman. I guess they're rappers. I don't know. One guy was pretending to be Jay-Z, and the answers were trying to convince me it was Jay-Z. It was not Jay-Z. But, uh, yeah, I, Uncle Murda may have been the rapper for the New York crew, hmm. and, and he may have never showed up. I don't know. Because I could have sworn he was in jail. That, That's what they said at the beginning. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, as these guys were yapping back and forth, out came Briscoe, Dope, and Creed. They were from Florida. Sadly, it was not the rock band Creed. That would have been money. Or Papa Briscoe. Hmm. Also true. Oh, there was a guy named Briscoe. I wrote it down, and I couldn't figure out why the announcers kept talking about the Briscoes during this match. So uh, the guy from Florida said he was fucking all the Atlanta and New York bitches. <laughs> then men began to battle. <laughs> Ruckus did some spots. The announcer said things like, nice driver there from Dope. The announcers called the Grim Reefer a crazy white boy, which is true. Uh... One announcer said you had to do whatever was necessary to pick up the victory, <laughs> including pull hair, raking eyes, or, quote, stab him. Stab him. Stab him. <laughs> don't take no shorts. Choke him. Pull his hair. Break his eyes. Stab him. Do whatever it takes to get that victory. Make your crew happy. Represent- Ruckus and Reefer did a bunch of flip dives and stuff. They uh, started doing some crazy double teams. There was a scary 3D-like move. The uh, Nobody will believe me if I say I'm going to watch this show a third time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not sober. <laughs> I may I may actually drink and watch the show a third time. There 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 was a scary 3D move, a scary a very scary double power bomb in the turnbuckles 
And then the uh, New York crew, Blade and Negro, they hit a scary double pile driver. And then they began to celebrate. And while they were celebrating, one of the Atlanta dudes dove in behind their backs and stole the pin. The -hmm. Atlanta crew was apparently known as the Ghetto Mafia. They all celebrated backstage. These matches were... They're fine. Wrestling by and large. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. I had no problem with any of the wrestling. I just never knew what the fuck was happening. No. <laughs> so there was uh, three men on the street. I identified two of these men as white dudes. And then through halfway through the co- promo, I realized, wait a minute. That's the fucking SATs, isn't it? Yeah, that's the SATs. They're not white. So uh, I have no idea what they're talking about, except there was a bridge. And anyone who would cross this bridge would get beat up. I... I never knew that, that <laughs> things were so rough in other parts of the country. Like, they're not allowed to cross their bridge or you'll get beat up. Well, did you see the bridge, too? I didn't see <laughs> the bridge. This is not like a one-lane footpath. <laughs> I think it was the goddamn Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, well, I see. Yes. So if they came into Brooklyn, they'd be in trouble. I understand right. that. I, 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 I thought this was like, you know, a, a, a small bridge that a billy goat would go over, like in the old tales. Hmm. Two dudes got in the car for a chat. They sat there and mumbled for a while. Mumbled is the operative word. One guy passed the other envelope. They talked about Red Cafe, was what I believe his name was, but I'm pretty sure that was the black guy hanging out with the SATs. They said they needed the title, and it was about that money. This went on too goddamn long. Mm. We had a multiracial crew discussing titties and ass. Another one came in, demanded his money. The guy who was supposed to have the money didn't have it. They all mumbled together. The guy who was owed money did the absolute worst ripoff of Joe Pesci's speech from Goodfellas uh, ever. And he sent the crew to go get, it, go get his fucking money. There's a guy in a shirt that said Rebel Gang. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just read what it says here. He talked with his friends about, um, I don't know. Another man came up and said, I got you. He said, yeah. <laughs> that was the whole bit. <laughs> You know what? I was going to read my notes for beta. Perhaps, well, actually, the next one gets pretty long here. The New York crew was hanging out. They were not with the losing shit. Also, fuck the bullshit. They, too, were about getting that money. The camera just cut away mid-sentence. Yeah. You know, there was a typo in the newsletter that I just wanted to correct here on the air. Mm. There was one segment that occurred in a dressing room. And uh, in the newsletter, I said I did not know who, what, when, where, why, and how. And it went approximately 10 seconds. That's actually a typo. It went it went two seconds. Mm. Did yeah. that, that would be what happened next year? It may have been. I don't know where it was. I don't know who it was. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it was two seconds. I believe it was this one. I will read my notes verbatim again. A man was talking on the phone. A larger man walked up and shoved the small man into a wall, laid him out with a running knee strike, and continued on his way. That's a different one. Somebody else walked past shook his head, and went into a door. He saw a man and said, what the fuck? And they both ran out. Mm -hmm. What in the hell was that? I don't know. So the ring announcer tried to introduce the two men who would be fighting the next encounter, and they did not bother to uh, let their names be read because they came out fighting. There was a white guy with blonde dreadlocks. There was a Mexican. The uh, white guy with blonde dreadlocks, the more he wrestled, the more he realized... This man is an RVD knockoff. Then I watched him and I thought, you know what? Actually, he has he is more coordinated than Rob Van Dam. Mm. He's much smaller and uh, and, and uh, less, uh, in other ways, less athletic. But his, his body control is far superior. I believe the announcers refer to this as ultimate toe jam. That's the best I could get. I did hear toe jam in there somewhere. Yeah. I don't know what that One means. One of them also said Urban Wrestling Federation is the best in the world right now. A lie. They did chair shots to the back, all kinds of stuff with the chair. Uh, he, eventually, there's a table on the floor, and the dreadlock dude tried to somewhat like a rope walk into a Rana, but he got power bumped hard off the apron through the table, and this was the pin. One of the announcers uh, was named Julius. I thought it may actually be Julius Smokes. And the idea of having Julius Smokes on your show and having him on commentary and not cutting promos is too absurd to imagine. So the Mexicans crew came out and celebrated. I guess his name is Bestia. Not Bestia. Bestia. Mm-hmm. Uh, whoever was talking, I have no earthly idea who it was, but he was to this point far and away the best talker on the show. You never guessed this, but he wanted his money. <laughs> yeah. So they beat, beat Bestia up. Uh, I believe one of these men was named Cheese. They were beating him up. The guy in the mic had to warn his men, literally warn him, warn them, don't kill him. Yeah. 
And uh, one of them was apparently pressing Bestia over his head for a long time, but we barely saw this because the camera was focused on the hot girl at ringside. Which is fine. She's pretty hot. There, there were a, lot, some, of a lot of hot girls. Actually, the last one was the hottest, but there were a lot of hot girls in the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, they left. They carried Bestia over their shoulder. The announcers were on camera for literally three seconds. Uh, Stevie J met with a man who may have been Chris Johnson of the Tennessee Titans. Actually, we later learned that apparently this was someone named Melly Mel, one of the very few people whose names I got from the show. Oh, God, this fucking segment. Stevie J's phone rang. We couldn't hear the guy on the other end of the phone. We couldn't understand Stevie J, which is actually more annoying than not hearing the other guy at all. He talked for a while. He passed the phone to Melly Mel for a while. Melly Mel made jokes about child support and said he was as big as a house. And this right here was the, ex- is the exact moment where I got completely and utterly sick of the show and decided that if I had bought this on my own, with my own money, just for my own entertainment, here is where I would have turned it off. A bunch of men talked on the cell phone for a while. It was eventually established that they were supposed to ride with Mel, and then it ended. This was shit. Men argued on the street. They didn't know who each other were, but they were willing to fight. A bus drove by. <laughs> That is not poetry, everyone. That's, that is not meant to be a lyric. That is what happened. That's what happened. With the murder screw. And I hear y'all motherfuckers from Little Haiti may have something to do with our product score missing. Hold up, dog. You know anything about that, son? Son. Yo, check this out, dog. Yeah, I'm here with Blue. You know what I'm saying? We get money, we get bitches, we getting all that. You know how we do, dog. But if y'all got some... Homicide problems- appeared on television, and I was thrilled to see someone with actual talent. He cut a promo. He was uh, talking about having more bitches and money than Eddie Kingston. I sincerely hope that is true. He is uh, so ridiculously head and shoulders above the rest of the show. Melly Mel was giving Eddie Kingston a pep talk, telling him Homicide was fucking his bitches. <laughs> this is where the show really started to turn it around for did. me. This uh, it did actually turn a, a it turned an amazing corner at this point. This show was built for Homicide and Eddie Kingston. You know what I mean? In a lot of ways. They should be there cutting promos on each other about who is fucking whose bitches. Yeah. That's great. And getting that money. And getting that money. So, uh, Eddie Kingston said he had been compared to Homicide for nine years. In what way? They wrestle. That's like all I got. And he did, I'm not joking about this part, he did say he wanted money. I did love how, how Eddie Kingston said everywhere he went... And then his his examples of places that he went. <laughs> strip, clubs, strip clubs. Auto shows. <laughs> auto shows. I fucking howled. Well, <laughs> I believe those are the kinds of places Eddie Kingston would go. So, yes, Eddie Kingston versus Homicide, the main event. Melly Mel was out there. He had the biggest arms in the show. Announcer said Homicide was about his money. <laughs> Eddie Kingston in this match was a fantastic heel. He was completely willing to make himself look like a geek for our entertainment. Yeah. They were brawling on the floor, trading shops. Homicide gave him an eye poke. He did the funniest sell of an eye poke I've ever seen. Worth the price of admission right there. Homicide beat him up forever. Kingston cut him off. They brawled on the floor. They had a chop fest. Usually when you do a chop fest, you know, one guy will hit the first guy really hard and then they'll switch places and just repeat. Homicide hit a bunch of chops, and Kingston told them like he was on fire. Then finally, Kingston cut him off, and he threw Homicide into the corner, and he started laying in chops like uh, 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 Kibashi, just mm-hmm. as fast as he could go, bam, bam, bam. And Homicide is standing like straight up, not even reacting or flinching, and staring at this man with a blank expression. Just, no, something is not a strong enough word. He was non-registering these chops. Yes. So Kingston stopped, and he looked at him. And he just kept on shopping. Kept he trying. was not going to give up. He's he not going to quit. Dozens and dozens and dozens of chops. None of them had any effect. And finally, Homicide just grabbed him and chopped him back. That made me laugh. So uh, Kingston came back. He had a backdrop driver, dropped Homicide right on his brain. Homicide fought back, hit a top rope ace, ace crusher, and then ended Kingston's life with a cop killer. Bad. Yeah. A bad cop killer. <laughs> so well, depends on what you consider bad. It bad, was bad. Bad if you were Eddie Kingston. Yeah. So, this, it was a good match, and on this particular show, it seemed like Flair Steamboat at their absolute peak. So, then here was where the, uh, I, I, I don't know, guys were talking or whatever. There was a girl in the apron, and the camera just zoomed in on her ass, and this could have been up there for another hour, and I'm not a complaint. Mm. All right, here. <laughs> <laughs> this. The last, it was probably like three minutes of the show. The last three minutes of the show was like a bad NyQuil trip. 
I'll go back to reading things verbatim. Red Cafe's boys ran into Uncle Murda's boy. They yelled at each other for a while. You got way more of that than I did. <laughs> well, I think it was the SATs. But I see. Like, that's all I know. I see. And Uncle Murda's boy, by the way, it may have been Zeus. Not certain. Never saw his face, I don't think. Next segment. Kingston was storming through the backstage, screaming and swearing. He said this was far from over. <laughs> he just goes, ah, shit. What did he say? Fuck you. Think, oh, shit. I think, ah, oh, fuck was the first one. <laughs> it was fuck you. I remember that. He stumbled in holding his head. He'd just been cop killing. So they had a camera backstage. And he stumbles in and goes, fuck you. Ah, oh, shit. I've seen Kingston like a half dozen times. I never gave him enough credit. <laughs> no. This was great. Okay. Fuck you! Oh, shit! Oh, I'm still saying it, though, motherfucker! Okay, next segment. Man, I mean, what would you say if some man just dropped you on your fucking head? <laughs> yeah, I would swear. You know, on on uh, on, on SmackDown this week, uh, uh, Ted DiBiase got dropped right on his face by Sin Cara. And he just comes out for the next match to be a second. Not Eddie Kingston. He stumbles in going, oh, fuck. He lets it, fuck you. He lets you know he's upset about what just happened. Yeah. Next segment. Men met in darkness. No idea who they were. Couldn't understand what they were saying. Virtually pitch blackness. <laughs> it's like a street light 20 feet away. One did want to make paper. They said the fuckers from Miami were trying to violate. Yeah. That was the segment. Next segment. Bestia was upset he got beat up by his crew. That's all that happened. Mm-hmm. Next segment. Black men shouted in darkness somewhere. They were making money. A guy came up with, quote, dope money. Then a fight broke out. <laughs> the fight broke out, and it's like, it's pitch black, and you just hear, Punk motherfucker! Fuck you! And the sound of, Fuck off! <laughs> it's quite a brawl. Somebody opened the back of their truck, then closed it. Another fight broke out. Next segment. Men shouted at each other. He forgot about the man who was thrown into the car. I did forget trunk. that part. He, he it's was... funny because I remember seeing this, but when I saw it the second time, I realized they threw a man into the trunk of the car. So you think, okay, well, they're going to abduct this fella. But they threw him into the trunk of the car and then just ran away. And it appeared, I believe he was the same guy that opened it, so I think this was his car. <laughs> well, that'll teach him. <laughs> to what? <laughs> I don't know. To give them their fucking money. <laughs> I guess that's it. Men shouted at each other. At least now it was in a well-lit club. Two of them inexplicably ran outside. Now, now was one of those two men homicide? I have no Because upon second idea. viewing, I think homicide was one of the men who, who ran, ran outside? outside. Yeah, I have no idea. Hmm. Uh, I, I did not know this, but this was now in broad daylight. Two of them inexplicably ran outside, got in a car, and drove away. The others followed, running into the streets and opening fire. <laughs> opening fire? Yes, with a handgun. As the bullets flew, the words copyright urban wrestling flashed on the bottom of the screen, and it ended. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, we spent more time talking about it than all. Those last five segments flew by in, in, in fact, maybe two minutes. Oh, this show. Just a mess. This show. It's funny because, like, when the show started, it's urban wrestling, and, and there's a bunch of dudes swearing, and, and they want their money, but they never actually, you know... They never get to the the drug issue or anything like that. So I'm thinking, are we supposed to read between the lines here for this entire show? And then, I will say this about the show. It built well. But in the show, they flat out were talking about drugs, and they were trying to shoot fuckers. Huh. (laughs) I'm glad you consider that building well. (laughs) This show was amazing. I consider a lot of chaos that ended with guns and drugs. Yeah. Which, actually, that makes sense when you put it that way. Sure. Uh, amazing is not a bad word. They, they saved the gunfire for the end. They built to a finish. I actually want to, I want to talk to or, or, or read about, or I just want someone who watched the show and just not even, I can't say enjoyed it because for, for the most part, I actually thought it was like too bad to even be fun. But if, if anyone out there actually thought this was a good show, I, I'm dying to hear their viewpoint. Steve Carroll. Was he on your show? Yeah, he was on the show today. You can listen to it. And he thought it was, he thought his show he thought his product was good. Yeah, I must hear. This. In fact, stop. I, let's stop recording. <laughs> stop start playing it right now. Well, I'm more fascinated about how he would talk about how great his program was. You can go home and listen to it later. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So there you go, everybody. That's uh, Urban Wrestling. It's available on uh, pay per view. 
There's some replays, July 1st and 2nd. Yeah, check it out. I was actually, uh, I, I, I will say that I was, I, was, uh, I was flabbergasted when I went to replay it. And uh, as noted, when I, when I was about to, when I, when I pulled it up on my DVR deal, it claimed it was, how much did it say? 50? Uh, $49, yes. It said like $49.95. And For I, an hour. I almost peed my pants, I'm not going to lie. But uh, the actual cost is $14.95. Which, as Vinny noted, is worth it for Eddie Kingston's eye poke. Yes. Yeah. And, Vinny, <laughs> you want to know why I have to watch the next one? Sure. Because you know who's going to be on the next Urban Wrestling Federation pay per view? fucking clue who's going to be on the next one. Ricky Ortiz makes his return to wrestling. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about who that was. Ricky Ortiz. Ricky Reyes? Of no. Tiffany fame. Wow. Maybe they can find her. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I'm sure she is accessible. She can come out and talk about getting that money. <laughs> getting? We need to get that money, Ricky. Ricky, we need to get that motherfucking money. What is happening?